Hello. My name is Thomas Bruce and I am the 7th Earl of Elgin. In November 1798 I was appointed Ambassador Extraordinary and Minister Plenipotentiary of His Britannic Majesty to the sublime port of Selim III, Sultan of Turkey. Being an ardent admirer of classical Greek art, before my departure to take up the post, I approached officials of the British government to inquire if they would be interested in employing artists to take casts and drawings of the sculptured portions of the Parthenon, undoubtedly one of the world's greatest cultural monuments. The answer of the British government was however entirely negative, so I decided to carry out the work myself, and employed several skillful draftsmen and modelers to take casts and drawings under the supervision of the Neapolitan court painter, Giovanni Lucieri. As you all know, Greece was then part of the Ottoman Empire and the Acropolis of Athens was at that time an Ottoman military fort, so I required special permission to enter the site. I therefore sought and obtained a firman from the Sultan which I have unfortunately since misplaced, allowing my artists to access the ancient temples. The firman effectively allowed my team to erect scaffolding so as to make drawings and mouldings in chalk and gypsum, as well as to measure the remains of the ruined buildings and excavate the foundations which were covered by debris. This document also allowed me to take away a few pieces of stone with old inscriptions or figures thereon. In the year 1801 I began to remove as much material from the Parthenon and its surrounding structures as was possible under the supervision of Lucieri. A minor setback occurred when the Ottoman commander of the fortress began objecting to the removal of the sculptures but I managed to obtain his cooperation with a tidy little sum and we continued with our task without further interruption. Some sculptural pieces were also removed from the Erechtheion, the Propylaea, and the Temple of Athena Nike, all within the ancient Acropolis. In 1803 a selection of sculptures was packed and sent to Piraeus for shipment to Great Britain. My shipload of precious marbles on board the brig Mentor was unfortunately caught in a storm off Cape Matapan in southern Greece and sank near Cerigo, but after three laborious years, and at a considerable expenditure, Greek divers eventually managed to retrieve my priceless cargo. Following my departure from Turkey that same year, I withdrew all my artists from Athens with the exception of Lucieri, who remained to direct the excavations which were still carried on, though on a much reduced scale. Additions continued to be made to my collections, and as late as 1812, 80 fresh cases of antiquities arrived in Britain. My desire was of course to use the antiquities to decorate Broom Hall House, my private residence near Dunfermline in Scotland, but a costly divorce suit compelled me to sell my beloved sculptures to settle my outstanding debts. Declining offers from other potential buyers, including Napoleon no less, I dutifully presented the marbles to the British government but was initially refused, indeed. Though many Britons hailed my acquisition of these antiquities as nothing short of a national triumph, others, like that Byron fellow, accused me of outright vandalism and looting. However, as you are all aware, a public debate in our esteemed Parliament has fully exonerated my person of any wrongdoing or duplicity. Ha ha. In 1816, the British government purchased the marbles, albeit for considerably less than the £70,000 sterling I had originally invested to obtain them. Parliament prudently passed the sculptures on to the British Museum, where they are now on display in the purpose-built Duveen Gallery. I say prudently because, as you are all well aware, the Greeks gained their independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1832 and the newly founded Greek state has begun a series of projects to restore its monuments and retrieve looted art, including my marbles from the Acropolis and the Parthenon. Good luck with that. Ha!